Hey everyone, a big welcome back to the Wee Larder channel. Today I'm going to be making a delicious Scottish steak pie with flaky pastry and Aberdeen Angus beef. Um, if you can't get Aberdeen Angus beef, you can just use a really good quality beef um, for this recipe. So I have actually made my own pastry for the top. Um, now I'm not going to claim to be a pastry expert at all. I am still learning in the pastry department. But this recipe worked out really, really well for this recipe. Um, for this pie rather and it was really nice so if you want to give the recipe a try the pastry a try I would recommend it it's really really delicious um, but if you're not so good at pastry and you want to skip that part and make it a bit easier then you can buy a pre-made um, shop uh, bought uh, puff pastry for this recipe so a couple of things I've lost my voice so I do apologize I'm trying to be as clear as possible and I don't have a babysitter today, so <laughs> my little toddler is running around in the back, so you might hear her um, in my video as well, so bear with me. <laughs> Just like to keep things real around here. So let's get started on our delicious Scottish steak pie. So for our delicious steak pie recipe, we're going to need pastry and our pie filling. So you might want to pause it here to write down these ingredients. So we're going to pop our flour into our sieve just to remove any lumps and we're just going to sieve that through into the large mixing bowl. We're then going to add in our pinch of salt. And I'm also using my fork just to soften my butter a little bit. So if you've had your butter sitting out on the counter, I'm sure it'll be nice and soft, but mine was just needing a little bit um, softening. So I've popped the butter into our flour and salt mixture, and we're just gonna rub it through in our fingers lightly just to create breadcrumbs. So it's a breadcrumb type consistency that you're looking for. It does take a couple of minutes or so. Um, but if you just keep rubbing it through your fingers like this, you should have something that looks like crumbs like this in the end and we're then going to add in our squeeze of lemon so I've popped in approximately half a lemon worth of juice um, into our pastry so we're just going to give that a good mix through and we're going to add in our water so I use approximately 100 mils you might need a little bit more a little bit less what to do is if you just add half and then see how you get on and add a little bit at a time. So I added in 100 mils and it was just the perfect amount for me. Um, and you're just going to use that to create a dough. So we're just um, forming a dough together in the mixing bowl. So I added in another tiny bit more water there as well. So you're not looking for anything too sticky. Um, it should be fairly manageable in your hands and we're just going to smooth that out so it should look a little bit like this and um, we're just going to knead it ever so slightly in our mixing bowl just for a minute or so nothing too strenuous we just want to make sure everything is really well mixed through together So you should have something that looks like this and we're then going to pop this into the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes to chill. So once your dough is nice and chilled we're going to pop some flour down on our chopping board. Mine's is still um, stained with beetroot <laughs> so my chopping board's still looking very pink here. <laughs> so if you just put your flour down and um, spread it out and then we're going to pop our dough on our pastry onto our um, flour chopping board so we're just going to measure it out or roll it out rather into a large rectangular shape and we're then going to be putting one third of our butter onto two thirds of the pastry so you will understand when you see so i've just used this knife just to show you roughly the thirds um, of the pastry here so I'm not cutting into it or anything I'm just using it as a guide so I'm popping the butter onto our pastry so we're just filling up two-thirds of our pastry here and we're then going to fold this over so we're going to fold it once over like this and once more again 
So once our dough is folded over, we're going to chill that for another 15 minutes. Now, uh, once it's chilled again, we're going to bring it back onto the chopping board and seal the ends with our rolling pin. We're then going to roll out our dough again to another rectangular shape. And we're going to add our second third of our butter onto two thirds of the pastry. Now, some pastry recipes use precise measurements um, for making their pastries. So if you're looking for something more precise, you might want to do a Google because I am quite rustic in my cooking. <laughs> so we're going to fold that over and we're going to seal it again and chill it again for another 15 minutes. Then we're going to bring it back out and roll it out for our final piece of butter. So you should be building up lots of lovely layers by now. And we're just going to pop all of our butter down on our final um, roll. So we're put looking for two thirds of the pastry again. My rectangles seem to get smaller with each um, roll, but <laughs> you can try it and roll them out a little bit larger if you like. So I've just sealed the ends with the rolling pin again, and now we're rolling it out for our final rectangle. I'm going to pop this into the fridge for about 20 minutes to chill completely. So while that's in the fridge, we're going to make a start on stewing our beef. So we're going to add our butter into our pan there. So we're just going to melt that down nicely and we're then going to pop in our onions as well. So we're just going to cook our onions down for a couple of minutes and I absolutely love the smell of onions and butter cooking away. It is heavenly. It's so, so good. So once we've cooked those down for a couple of minutes, we're then going to add in all of our beef. We're going to add our flour into the pan as well. You can actually mix the flour and beef together in a bowl before you pop it into the pan, but I just find it easier and less washing up if I just do it in the pan. <laughs> so we're just going to brown our beef. Um, so we're looking for our no pink bits left on the outside and we're going to be browning that through. So it takes about five minutes or so. Um, so I've added in my two tablespoons of flour now and I'm just coating the beef in the flour. And this is just going to help create a really nice sauce for our steak pie. So we're then going to give that a really good season with salt. So I've given it a good pinch of salt. So it's probably about a tablespoon, a teaspoon, sorry, it's worth of salt. So we're just going to give that a good mix through again. Don't worry if it's sticking to the bottom of the pan a little bit because we will be um, lifting all those lovely browned bits from the bottom of the pan when we make the gravy. So that will just help to flavour the gravy. So that's totally fine. So once that is browned all over, we're then going to pop it into a dish to cool. I'm just using the pie dish that I'm actually using to make the pie. You can just pop it onto a plate or whatever you have available. It doesn't really matter. We're just popping it to the side um, to cool a little bit while we make the gravy. So we should have a little bit of liquid left in the pan and we're also going to add more liquid into that. So our beef is looking really nice and browned here in our dish and we're then going to make our gravy. So we have a little bit of liquid here and we're just going to give that a good whisk up just to get all those lovely meaty pieces off of the bottom of the pan as well and all those onion flavours. And this is going to make such a delicious gravy for our steak pie. So we're going to pop in our stock, so I've got popped in my water, I've actually just added in a vegetable stock cube. You can use bone broth if you have that available, that would be really really nice in here. Or um, another um, beef stock cube, I've just used a vegetable stock cube. So we're just going to whisk that up and we're going to cook that down for a few minutes. And we're then going to add in a good pinch of salt, so probably another tablespoon of salt. Everything is well seasoned here. And we're going to add it in our Worcestershire sauce. I hope I pronounced that correctly. 
and we're going to add in our tomato puree as well. So we're going to whisk that through for about five minutes. We're just put, got it in a low to medium heat. So we're just going to simmer that away just to um, get all the flavours off the bottom of the pan and into the gravy. So once that has simmered away, we're then going to add our beef very carefully back into our pan. And we're now going to cook this um, low and slow. So we're looking for a low to medium simmer for approximately an hour or just until your beef is very well done. And it is so delicious cooked this way. So after an hour it should look something like this. Um, we still have quite a bit of liquid gravy in there and that's okay because the pastry will soak that up and it just makes it so delicious. <laughs> um, this pie in my opinion tasted really similar to the ones that we would buy locally in the butchers and um, so I was quite pleased with that and it, it was just a really nice traditional flavour. You can also add a little bit of kidney in here if you want as well. Um, personally it's quite difficult for me to get my hands on so I haven't actually added it in. So now we're going to make the lid for our pie. So we've just left our beef to cool slightly because we don't want it to be too hot when we put the lid on. So we've taken our pastry out of the fridge and we're just going to roll it into a circular shape. So the pastry is um, quite stiff and that's okay. That's nice and chilled. And we're just going to roll that out. So we're just looking for a rough circular shape and we're then going to use our pie dish to um, cut out the lid for the pie. So if you just pop the dish down on top of your pastry and if you just use a knife to cut around, it doesn't have to be a perfect line. My pastry skills are always quite rustic, so, <laughs> um, but I like it that way. <laughs> so we're just going to cut that out, or pull it out rather. Smooth off the edges a little bit, and we're then going to pop a couple of holes in the top of the pastry. Just to let the steam escape. Um, we're then going to pop that into the oven for 25 minutes or basically until our pastry has risen well and is golden on brown on top. So we're using our egg yolk um, to glaze so it's basically just one egg whisked up and um, we're just going to pop that all over the top of the pie and that will just give the pie a really nice um, glaze and we're then going to pop that in the oven. So we're going to pop it in at 160 for about, about 25 minutes. Just keep a close eye on it. It doesn't need to cook for too long because the beef is already cooked. So we're basically just cooking the pastry. So it should look something like this when it is finished. The pastry should be nice on the top and crispy and crunchy. Nice and golden brown, not burnt. And it should have risen as well a little bit. So you can kind of tap it and you can hear that it's sort of crispy on the top. And this just smells absolutely amazing. It is so delicious. And we're just going to take a nice, clean, crispy slice through the pastry just to show you. And of course, because I am the chef in the house, I get to taste it first. And it was really, really tasty. There wasn't a drop of this pie left, in fact, when we cooked it. So we, it fed but like six people. So that's including a toddler. So it fed like five people and a little mini person. <laughs> so you can see all the lovely crispy layers and the bottom part of the pastry has soaked up a little bit of the gravy as well. And it is just so delicious. The beef is just cooked perfectly as well. It's like melt in the mouth texture. It's so good.
So I just served up with some green beans, carrots, some shredded cabbage. Mashed potatoes would also work really well, but because there's a lot of carbs in the pastry, I like to go for greens and vegetables. But you can just serve up with, with whatever is seasonally available. So this went down a treat with everyone in my house. They absolutely loved it. There wasn't a scrap left. <laughs> there was maybe a few vegetables left on the plates, but hey. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this delicious classic Scottish steak pie. So I hope you enjoyed making that recipe. Um, it is a, such a good family recipe, especially for this time of year. It's one of my favourite autumn recipes. Um, <laughs> sorry, someone's trying to grab my leg. <laughs> Um, so if you took a photo of your delicious Scottish steak pie, please feel free to tag me on Instagram and I'll share it on my stories. Um, if you enjoy Scottish recipes, Scottish family recipes in particular, then please feel free to grab a copy of my free cookbook over on my website if you pop in your email for that. And I'm also still working on my family seasonal cookbook, so it's going to be with you guys soon. I'm so excited about this. Um, it is just full of so many delicious recipes. It's really, really good, so that's gonna be coming out soon. Um, and I also have loads of delicious recipes on their way to you, so if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a big thumbs up, and if you click that little subscribe button and the bell next to it, I will see you guys again soon. So take care, lots of love, bye-bye.